Yes, the people, the video is sponsored by Squarespace once again. Let's do it. Forgive me for the somewhat cliched and self-improvement-esque sounding title to the video, but listen, I have somehow managed to maintain what I think is fair to describe as a semi-respectable physique for roughly a decade now. And so I thought I would put together a video basically for anyone who wants to do the same because there is so much information out there right now about how to get in shape or how to do anything really. But above all, the key factor is consistency. The perfect routine isn't really worth much if you don't stick to it. Whereas even a suboptimal routine can lead to progress over the long term with consistency. So I'm gonna go through some tips for sticking at stuff long term and I will relate them all back to the gym because that's just what I have personal experience with. But I'm sure that a lot of them can be applied more generally to pretty much anything. So some of these are pretty basic and some will be a little bit more nuanced, but let's just do it. Pick a clear, attainable, and sustainable target. I'll start with the most basic first and this is really two in one. Firstly you need a clear goal so that you can have some kind of sense of direction and for that you really need to deploy some realism because I understand that whilst it's captivating to imagine yourself being sick at loads of different things at once, the more goals or different targets you throw into the mix, the less efficiently you're able to progress towards each one of those goals. And by that I mean every time you split your focus, you lose some returns. For example, if you could do an experiment with parallel universes, and in one, you focus solely on one thing, and in the other, you split your focus between two things. I would say that you're probably gonna be more than twice as good at that one thing in that universe where you only focused on the one thing. In some sense, it's like an economy of scale, if you're familiar with the term. Anyway, I've said it before and I will say it again, indecision kills gains, so decide and go for it. Now your goal also needs to be attainable and sustainable because well, otherwise you won't be able to attain or sustain it, <laughs> obviously. Now in relation to lifting and fitness, that means that you need to work with a target that is relevant to your schedule, ability and potential, and then any other limitations that you might have. And I suppose that's true for any target. For example, I don't try and maintain sub 10% body fat year round. A, because I feel like that would be quite a tragic existence and B, because I'm not actually sure it's possible. However, I do dip into that territory once or twice a year. So really, the illusion of consistency is actually minor oscillations about a consistent average maths. <laughs> Number two, don't try and take shortcuts. Now, I might risk offending people here, but just let me be clear so that I at least reduce that offense. I'm not trying to say that taking steroids is in some way cheating or even that people who take steroids don't have to work hard. I'm just saying that when we're talking about long-term consistency over years and years, I would posit that statistically speaking, you have more chance of remaining consistent if you stay natural. Now, again, that is complete speculation. I could, of course, be wrong, but on a personal level, maybe I'm a little bit old fashioned in the sense that I dislike anything related to our current quick fix culture. And I think that over the long term, it is probably bad for our personal development. If you wanna be a pro bodybuilder, then obviously this doesn't apply whatsoever. But if you actually just wanna be in good shape for life, then frankly, not doing steroids would be my advice. And that obviously extends beyond lifting and fitness because you could watch this video and get all the information you need to get out of it on 1.5 times speed. That'd be fine, you know, you are welcome to do that and it'd all be the same. But there are some lessons in life that you cannot learn on fast forward because the lesson, the value is in the waiting. Patience is a teacher and the harder something is to achieve, the more it will instill that sense of a work ethic and appreciation for the value of delayed gratification. And also the longer you work for something, the more you put into it, probably the less likely you will be to wanna to let it go so easily. TLDR, taking shortcuts is bad for you. Focus on progress and track shit. So if you're 16 year old and you start in the gym, you're not gonna just continuously build muscle in a linear fashion year on year for the rest of your life. And the same goes for any kind of strength gains or fat loss or progression in any physical skill. 
that just isn't how progress occurs in the real world. And so you'll go through phases, ups and downs, periods where you might want to focus more on one aspect than another. And that's pretty essential even aside for the specifics of training, just to keep yourself interested. I've been through phases of trying to build muscle, lose fat, focusing on different areas or trying to get better at specific exercises. Maybe I'll put deadlifts three times a week into my program and I'll focus on them and I'll be really enjoying them and enthusiastic about it and then eventually that enthusiasm might wane and so I might just knock them back down to a kind of maintenance level and shift focus to my bench press or some other area. And so whilst you might not be making progress on all fronts at all times, you can and should always be making progress in one place and that is perfectly possible. And I would say it's almost a prerequisite for consistency because I can guarantee if there is no progress on any front, you're gonna get bored, shit will get stale, there'll be zero enthusiasm and you're likely to just lose interest pretty fast and I suppose that goes for anything in life really or even life itself mate. Number four, take the romance out of it. Nothing you do over a 10 year period or longer bears any resemblance whatsoever to a Rocky montage. That's all inspiring and passionate and emotional. It's all about getting riled up and just going and smashing it. And that might get you through a workout or help you go and hit a new PR on bench press, but it won't even last long enough to get you through a training program. And what's more, this attitude creates an association between motivation and action, as if you have to feel like doing something in order to do it. Listen, sometimes you're gonna be on the way to the gym and you're gonna be thinking to yourself, actually you really can't be asked with this session, but you're still gonna go, right? Because you want the payoff, it's for the greater purpose, right? So by all means, take your pre-workout, put your tunes on, get pumped up before a session, whatever you wanna do. But if you're in it for the long haul, then behind everything, your approach should be methodical and clinical. Because people might like to use that cheesy quote, I don't know where it came from, about how bodybuilding is an art and like your body is your canvas and all that kind of shit. But you know, it is actually a science, isn't it? And after all, science gets results because art doesn't fly planes or create vaccines, mate. So it should all be an analytical, methodical, clinical, clean cut, scientific method, empirical fucking you know what I'm saying? Number five, do what you can when you can in anticipation of when you can't. There's gonna be times when you're not able to make progress. In relation to the gym, maybe you're on holiday where in some new country that I've never heard of that doesn't have any gyms, or you're injured, or there's something else taking up your time, whatever it is, and even if it's not related to fitness, there will be times when you can't focus on what you want to focus on as much as you would like to. And so what are you gonna do in those times? Well, hopefully, you're not gonna shit yourself and feel anxious about it. Because ideally, you have built up a body of work behind that, which will make this current brief period seem relatively insignificant. You know, if all of a sudden, gyms closed down for some weird reason, like I don't know why that would ever happen, but if they did, let's say, I'm probably not gonna have a panic attack unless I drank too much coffee that day. Because I've trained for maybe like 14 years now or something like that. And so I'm probably gonna get through it like you know taking a full week off after going to the gym for a month might seem like a big deal yeah taking a week off after going to the gym for six months might seem like less of a big deal taking a week off after training for five years a drop in the ocean and so there will be times where you can't work on whatever you want to work on because life is truly unpredictable and I think we can all agree on that and so you do have to in some sense prepare for those times by making the best use of that time when you can be making progress. You're essentially just putting work in the bank, mate. You're just banking it, you know, for tough times. You know, maybe I don't feel like going to the gym on a Tuesday night, but if somebody told me that the gym is gonna be closing on Wednesday and be closed indefinitely, I would be going in there and performing the most ruthless workout possibly in human history. I might do it an eight hour arm workout or something. Six tactical breaks, whether it's a break from the gym, a break from studying, a break from working on your business or working on whatever you are currently working on. Everyone needs one from time to time. They're pretty important and they should be part of a larger overall strategy 
for sticking to something. You need to unwind and play some FIFA or do whatever you've got to do to chill out, right? So you can schedule them tactically for when it's convenient with your schedule, or you can just put them in whenever you feel like you need them. But there are just two main points that I want to make about breaks. The first is that rest should be rest, not half assed rest. Like there's the phrase, work hard, play hard, right? But there should be train hard, rest hard. Like let yourself fully off the hook, like both physically and mentally. So you actually forget about training or whatever it is just for the entirety of that break. And it's a full scale maxed out recuperation session, right? And the second is to keep the breaks short. Frequent shorter breaks are much better than very infrequent longer breaks because the long ones create this kind of sense as if getting back to things is like starting again as opposed to just like carrying on and so it's like this big task or effort to actually restart and get back on the wagon and so longer breaks often just become longer as things get deferred and then those long breaks can sometimes end up carrying on indefinitely. Number seven, giving up is always an option. Right, so a bit of a curveball, and I might be completely contradicting everything I've said up to this point, but listen, the overall goal of life in general is what? Be happy, have an enjoyable time, and eventually arrive at some sense of fulfillment, right? It's not actually to have big biceps or to be sick at bench pressing. However, those things might well be a legitimate part of the puzzle and actually very valid component to that enjoyment. But you know, you might make progress down a certain path and then be so far along and then eventually you think, actually, I don't think I want to do this anymore. You might just stop enjoying it altogether and think, I don't want to get to the end of this path. And so do you really have to keep going down it just because originally you said you would? because otherwise like, oh, you're a quitter, you know? Well, absolutely not. You do what you do because you enjoy it. And if you stop enjoying it, you stop doing it, flip the fucking script, cut your losses and just do not be afraid to move on and find the next thing. It's that whole kind of sunk cost fallacy where you're so invested in something that you can be afraid to waste all of the time you've already put into it. And so nonsensically, you just, waste more on it. It just makes zero sense whatsoever. Now, of course, with any larger goal, there will be less enjoyable periods. If you want to set up your own business, then at some point you're going to have to learn to do taxes, mate. It's not fun. Obviously, you could hire an accountant, but that doesn't that's, that doesn't help my example. So imagine accountants don't exist, right? There's going to be shit that you've got to do now and again that isn't the most enjoyable. Some gym sessions will be less enjoyable, you know, I've been training carbs twice a week for the last a zillion years and uh, basically any time you learn a skill there will inevitably be a period of time where the frustration is becomes so much that it's almost overwhelming and you want to pull your brain out and just punch it. Anything you do that's worth doing, it's not all just living the fucking dream start to finish. So you do have to expect that and expect those phases where you're just not gonna be as into it as other phases, but if they persist and you find that day after day after day, you are just getting zero enjoyment from it, fucking run for the hills, my friend, because life truly is too short. And ironically, I think having the attitude that you can always quit if you want to, you can always decide to put your focus into something completely different, in some sense, helps you to stick at it because it's always optional, no one's forcing you, it's always your choice. Hi, right, that's it. I think these are my best tips for sticking at something long term. If you have your own, I want to know them, mate. It's a conversation. Put them in the comments. And whilst you're there, you smash that fucking thumbs up button. Not with your fist, in case you break your phone or your computer, but you can just click it. That'd be great. That'd help me maybe get like a million subscribers one day, and then that'll make me happy for about three seconds before I'm dissatisfied again. Anyway, before we go, I want to shout out Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Once again, Squarespace is just this sick online place. It's a place, mate, where you can like make a website, you get a domain, make a blog, make an online store, all that kind of stuff. So check them out if you need a website for absolutely anything because it is just super easy. Even if you have literally zero web design experience, you can just choose one of their templates. There's loads of them, by the way and get started with personalizing it to make it something that's truly unique and your own. But it's not all form and no function because there's also loads of really useful features that you can take advantage of, whether it's 
set up email campaigns so you can get messages out to your audience or using the appointment scheduling feature if you have a business that requires people to book in or setting up discount codes for people to use on the products that you're selling you can do pretty much anything you want to do so if you want to check it out you can get started with a free trial at squarespace.com and then if and when you want to go ahead with it you can go to squarespace.com forward slash joe delaney and get 10 percent off your first purchase okay people ciao ciao sayonara